Hello, my combo lords. Back on another sunnyish day in the combo classroom. As one viewer was wondering, why are there googly eyes on the desk? Well, I actually bought many googly eyes and stick on ladybugs to stick all over the classroom and just haven't gotten around to all of it in all of my frenzy of recovering from surgery and making all these videos. But one day when I've already filmed a good amount for the day and I need a more relaxing activity out here, I will cover this zone with many more googly eyes. They can symbolize some interesting things, you know. Looking into this eye, to what degrees is it different than looking into the eye of an animal or a human? Obviously, there are many differences, but are there similarities? What if just looking into something that symbolizes an eye can symbolize something to you? Maybe someday there will be an alien who has the technology to look at us from a strange angle. And I can't predict if it's this angle or a, an angle up there or where the alien might be pointing their telescopes. So sometimes I look at those eyes and I blink at them. They can't blink at me and I think about life. There are nice meditational activities you can have with your symbols, such as staring into an eye that may or may not exist, and a variety of other fun mathematical and philosophical activities. But that is just my starting rant for today. Today has a main activity, actually, and that's because later today, when I film a full episode, it's going to be related to dice. And good thing, I already bought more than a thousand dice scattered all over this classroom. I don't have right now one spot that has more than a dozen dice in a single container, but there are thousands of dice total in the classroom. They're just everywhere. Some of them are in clocks. Some of them are on weird parts of the broken desk. Some of them are embedded in the floor. If you check out here, uh, dice spilled here before it rained. And let's see if I can point the camera down. Some of these dice are just on the ground. Others are embedded like a dice carpet that the rain lets sink in and get stomped in into the mud until dice become the floor. And as we keep going, dice will be all over the floor, creating a whole carpet because it's inherent when they're spilled and it rains and you step on it. I always tell people, you got to wear good shoes in the combo class. There might be crazy stuff on the ground. I've had filmmakers who come out here barefoot and I'm like, play at your own risk. So today's activity won't involve unearthing any of those carpeted dice. Those got to stay in the floor. However, there are many dice to collect around this strange realm. So as we stream and chat today, we will be making a collection of dice, and then I will be ready to have an insane amount of them in the episode I film later today. Now, for anyone wondering what today's episode about dice might be about, well, dice can symbolize a lot, and they have traits related to probability, but today's episode is not about probability. The episode I'm going to film today, which it won't be out for a few weeks due to editing, but there's a few episodes before it. We're going to have three vins, and then we're going to have modular clock magic, and then we're going to have this dice-related one. And it's not about probability. It's about shapes. So... Anyone wondering about shapes of dice, what I want you to wonder about is what is it about this 10-sided die that makes it less perfect than this 12-sided and 6-sided die? Is there a way to make the 10-sided more perfect to match those? Or is that weirdly impossible? <clears throat> so as we get ready to explain that, we will collect dice. <clears throat> Let me get a dice collection container. We're going to put them in this corn. It has a corn lid as well. When I was buying clocks at a thrift store, I saw these plant-related things for a few bucks each, and I was like, that seems like a good thing to stick in the corner, decorate my combo class with some vegetables, and fill them with dice. So we got dice in the corn, and we might also put some dice in the carrots and the other ones. Got a couple pens in these carrots. We'll toss those aside, let them roll down the desk. Carrots and corn. So let me point this somewhere. Whereas I chat, I can collect dice. 
it would take a long time to try and get all the dice here. That would be quite a quest. But I think that I can get hundreds of them. I think that if I play my cards right and I do my hunting skills right, there are hundreds of dice here. Let's see. So, starting off. Hope everyone's having a wonderful day as I collect these. This is a reference to the ladybugs that I will also stick on places, these little guys. I want to make a whole trail of them leading back to the combo classroom. If there's a whole trail of ladybugs leading toward the desk, <clears throat> then instead of having to tell anyone, oh, here's the combo classroom back there, I can just tell them, follow the ladybugs. And if they follow the trail of ladybugs and dice, they will probably end up in the combo class. So I haven't looked at any comments yet. Feel free to leave any thoughts or questions, which I will get to as usual. Fans will know that any little comment may trigger a 10 minute rant from me or maybe ignored if I'm already in the middle of something, but I will check those comments very soon. Now, we also got a lot of these googly eyes that spilled. They, uh, they also got all over the classroom, but they're still good to go. You peel off a little thing from the back and then the googly eye can stick wherever you want. So maybe we'll stick some googly eyes while we're dice collecting too. Now the thing is some people use those googly eyes to try and be like, I'm putting eyes on one item to make it look like they're its eyes. Uh, that's not surreal enough for me. I want just patches of eyes on trees and stuff. All right. What's up? Sebi says sticking around then heading to bed. Oh, my viewers are often in weirder, different time zones. Uh, not weirder. Every time zone is weird in its own right. But in time zones that for me, I forget it's night for them. Here it's noon. Well, not quite. It's about 11 a.m. And so far, we're off to a good start collecting dice. Got a bunch. Now, we're getting to a slightly more dangerous zone to collect dice. Because back here at the bottom of the desk is the most chaotic part of the combo class. Uh, and that's gravity's fault. That's because if I put something on the desk, say a pen or something while I'm filming gravity takes it down there. Now, since that has happened many times with many items, that is sort of a little vortex that gravity sends all of the items. So if you don't become careful, everything in combo class slowly accumulates in that vortex. Like if you've ever been at an ocean cove, there are certain places where all the driftwood goes up. Uh, that's my little cove of chaos. Now it's actually dangerous in there a little bit because pretty recently a clock shattered there, a big clock. That one used to have a glass cover on it. So uh, you'll see that in an episode soon, the shattering, but there could still be broken glass down there. So I should probably be wearing gloves. I'm just going to go nice and careful and slow while I work with this corner. So getting you guys a view of our little vortex, we can see I got a clock here. Okay, please don't be shattered. Not shattered. Yeah, got a good old clock there. The rain already gave this guy a little soaking, but that's okay. It left one, two, and three unsoaked, and those are pretty important numbers, so I'm cool with that. Now, this clock I'll set to the side because we're really looking for dice, but this will also make me clean up the vortex. Now, this is where all the whiteboards end up, because when I'm done with the whiteboard and I set it on the table, as you know, gravity. Now, there's a lot of whiteboards here. I don't know if you guys can see all these whiteboards, but we got, okay, I'm going to show you guys all the whiteboards the Vortex collected. We're gonna put them on this stack right here. Whoa, my desk is shifting. Okay, I gotta be careful. I'm on the desk, making a stack of whiteboards. This will be helpful when I film later. Cleaning up the Vortex in advance. Okay. Wow, got a lot of whiteboards. And whiteboards. 
and whiteboards and whiteboards and a clock that's missing its hands. Nah, you don't go on the whiteboard stack. And whiteboards and whiteboards and whiteboards and whiteboards and that's most of them well most of the ones the vortex got um googly eyes as earthquake detection kits that will help if there's ever a weird thing going on in the like ground here and some weird shaking going on this eye might give me a clue it'll bounce around as a little richter scale Pretty cool how different places detected earthquakes over time. Historical anecdote. Look up some of the ways that like certain Asian cultures were able to develop these earthquake detecting devices where things that wouldn't be startled by like a normal bump, but would be startled by some type of really subtle different shaking in the earth. How would you go about inventing those? Interesting to look at historical ways people have managed it. So here what else do we got we got plastic fruit we got plastic fruit we got pens i should save these pens in the they go in the whiteboard stack um and i kind of forgot that i was here for the dice but we got dice so where's my carrot Ugh. okay carrot this is where my dice are going we're off to I got to say a slow start because I keep getting distracted. So let me return to dice hunting. I want to have a lot of dice for this episode I'm about to film. So what I'm going to tell you guys while I collect these dice is a sequence that you're not going to know what this means necessarily until my episode comes out. But let me show you the sequence that I'm collecting dice to talk about. I don't think you'll recognize this integer sequence necessarily because it has some weird traits. You know integer sequences where like the first term might be the first Fibonacci number and each term is the nth Fibonacci number or something. Here's a sequence where n1 is 1, n2 is infinity, n3 is five and four is six and five is three and six is three and seven is three and all the future ones are three what a perplexing sequence we got infinity hanging out there we got an infinite amount of a thing hanging out there with this five and six in the middle? What could this have to do with dice? A lot of interesting things. So I'm nicknaming this my hyper dice sequence. See if that gives you any clues. And the hyper dice sequence will be a theme of today's episode. Now, as I collect dice, something it relates to are that there are different types of dice. So these are cubes. I don't care that one's green versus white right now. What I care is that they're both six-sided. I don't even care what numbers are on them. These are cubic shapes. Well, I mean, obviously it's rounded and stuff and has dots in it, but essentially it's functioning as a cube. Now, other ones, for example, may be functioning as a classic shape. This shape's so underrated. Now, it's not as good for dice. I get it. You Dice aren't as good four-sided. However, just as a shape, this is the simplest, perfect 3D shape you can make because it only requires four vertices, and it's like a triangle bumped up a dimension. So in any dimension, the version of this is the simplest. They're called the simplex sometimes. Like a five simplex might be this in, I think, five dimensions. I forget how they characterize the numbers on the simplex. But I like to call them hyper triangles or meta triangles. Not this one. This one is eight sided. Um, in fact, I dropped my level three hyper triangle. These are great shapes. So underrated. In fact, the 4D version of these, I don't know why hyper triangle isn't an established common nickname. 
cubes, the 4D ones, get two nicknames. People call it a hypercube. People also call it a tesseract. Two nicknames for the 4D version of this. No nicknames for the 4D version of the simplest one. Come on, guys. We got to start popularizing the term hyper triangle. All right. So as we look around, we also got some other cool ones, 20-sided. Anyone who plays games may like this, like D&D &D or Magic the Gathering. But it's also just a good shape. 20 triangles meeting perfectly. It's a nice one. We'll establish in the episode I'm making how this shape has traits that maximize something. Traits that no higher dice can achieve. Now, I should move the camera so you guys can see me do my dice investigations. Now, normally I don't have a good perch to put this because it's on my computer right now. Luckily, I already made a perch out of a whiteboard stack. So please, whiteboards, do not make my computer fall. Here we are. Oh, you guys got a clue of another upcoming episode. What could that table mean with all of these mods? What could that be? Hmm. Could it relate to clocks? Hmm. That's the episode that I filmed last that will come out in a week or two. Right now I'm working on my Threavens episode editing wise. Uh, it was, the audio was kind of off on that one because I tried recording the audio separate and there were some factors that made the audio come out worse in that one. So that one's going to be tricky to get the edit right, but it's a very fun episode. It's much more chaotic than some. It's uh, maybe more chaotic vibe. of uh, We'll see how it goes, but there's certainly math in it. There's a lot of math properties that make Threven need to be in the dictionary. But when I was explaining why Threven needed to be in the dictionary, some eggs broke, some paint got on me, some bricks fell. So, you know, Threven's... Got to embrace the chaos, but life has chaos. So when investigating Threavens, you will stumble into a little chaos. Now, someone's saying they saw a number file about platonic solids in a series. Yes, platonic solids may have a relation to this episode. So platonic solids are part of this sequence. Now, for those who don't know what platonic solids are, they relate to certain types of dice shapes. Um, so yes, number file is a great channel. They sometimes have mentioned some of the topics that I cover as well. My videos have a very different spin from how we approach topics than them, but they have talked with many great mathematicians who are trained in some really cool fields, including topics that I also love reading about and studying. So number file has some really fun stuff on there. If anyone's bored and runs out of combo class stuff, that is a good channel to check out. I will have to say, um, number files cool, but if I have to give a shout out to my favorite math creators, I would have to say three blue, one brown, mathologer, and stand up maths. Those are some very amazing creators if anyone ever runs out of combo class material and needs to learn more math. Um, now, Let's get a good angle of this dice zone. I don't know if you guys can see, but this is another corner of the vortex. This is where my phone went. This is where my abacus went. Oh my God, I forgot that I had a big type of dice. Looking for dice and I found this. Okay. Unfortunately, I don't have one of this size for all of the platonic solids, which there are five of. But still will probably be a good prop. Still going in the corn dice container. So, okay, we hit a landmine. Turns out these bricks, we're hiding a lot of dice under them. Okay, things are going places. This is one of the more chaotic streams, ladies and gentlemen. So get ready for uh, a little random dice hunting is what we're doing. So here's some more bricks that caused chaos in the three of an episode. And under them, oh, there's also a Lego car. I got that out because if you're testing physics, whoa, why isn't it going? Okay, these wheels are stuck or something. If you're testing physics, a Lego car, if it were to actually work, is a good way to test a slanted desk. This one's like stuck or something. You guys ever play with Legos when you were a kid? I still got a bunch of my old Legos and I still love using them. I'm trying to figure out how to make a cool, like a, 
stop motion Lego thing to show something about adding cubes. I need more cubic Legos though, because I wanted to like stop motion them into stuff about like Fermat's last theorem and about adding cubes into other cubes. But um, I might have to do that with dice cubes, like I did in some short videos, making cubes out of dice. Um, because Legos aren't as cubic. They go, they're tall. Now, here's some more bricks, some more. Okay, now this is what I was talking about when I said I should have been more careful back here. I just almost cut myself on glass. The Whoa, this could cause some chaos. So, like I said, I tell people in the combo classroom to wear shoes around the rest of the class and to be extra careful around the vortex. And that's because stuff like this can end up in the vortex. This is a shard of glass that could cause a lot of damage. Um, Got to be very careful when you're doing stuff. Um, and, of course, I'm not recommending any viewers try and spill any clocks like me. This clock... Normally when I spill clocks, because I'm clumsy, the glass doesn't shatter. They have pretty good glass. This was the first time such a big clock shattered a lot of big glass. So let's see if there's any more shards around here I got to remove. I guess that's most of it, these murderous ones. So these are going to go on another chair of the, the danger chair. Now... This is a cube. This is kind of a die. These are some really weird teaching things I found at a, when I was buying clocks at this kind of thrift store like place around here. They had all these random teaching blocks. And I was like, these are kind of funny. So this one says three in a big font. We got a seven in that font. And then we got another three in that font without the right. We got L. And we got a bird and we got grapes. Like, what is this die supposed to teach? I have no idea what someone was trying to teach with this, but I like it. Uh, should Okay, give a vote. Does this count as a die? Does this go in the die container or is this not one of the dice? Um let me check the comments again. We got a Lego fan. Yes, Arlene, Legos are awesome. In fact, my brother loves Legos at least as much as me. And he always encourages me to bust them back out and try some physics or stop motion or just build some fun stuff with Legos. In fact, you know, I, a few years ago, was on a cabin trip with friends, and we decided when we were stopping for supplies by a store, they got Legos here. Why not get Legos? We're in our 20s. We're going on a cabin trip, but why not get a set? So I got one of those sets. I got one of the three-in-ones where you get to build three types of animal. So I still like Legos. I got one vote that this is one of the dice, and no votes against. It's going in the box. Um, and yes, someone is trying or someone's recommending gloves. That does make sense if I were to like fully clean out this zone. Right now I'm going a little chaos style, but I'm mostly just dice hunting. And I didn't expect there would be such a big glass shard. Uh, hopefully there's not anymore. Um, what was this? I think this was a tray that went on my big whiteboard. I didn't need a tray on the thing. Or maybe I did and it broke. So you guys are seeing the messy corner of combo class. For any new viewers who don't know what's going on, welcome. I am collecting dice for a awesome video. I'm gonna teach this later afternoon. And for now, I'm just dodging spiders and glass shards while I collect all my dice. Here's another glass shard. Da, 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 da. Danger chair. Yep, better not sit on that danger chair. Here I got a blender. I, I wanted to plug this in and blend some stuff sometime, but ooh, we'll see when that happens. Maybe that'll be uh, in the grade one finale. I'll start blending stuff. You know, I was thinking the grade negative one we're in, it felt like uh, the desk breaking was about a halfway point of it, but that doesn't necessarily mean we're halfway through the episodes. I've made so many short videos, but it was harder to make longer videos. And now that I'm on a weekly schedule, even though we're only halfway through the grade, I think this grade's going to go until somewhere in the first couple months of next year. 
And I think next grade might start around April Fool's Day. And until then, we have a lot of crazy stuff to do in grade negative one. And although we're at the halfway point, we may be only at like the one third point of how many episodes you'll see. So that's a good handful of dice. Now, I really should be careful on this desk. If I got to call my surgeon and tell me to get that hip surgery again, I don't know how I'm going to explain. <laughs> oh, I run this show called Combo Class and my desk broke and then it fell on me. Uh, so here we got dice on dice. There's also a lot of spiders in here. I hope none of them want to bite me. Insects are okay. They're my friends. Spiders are not technically insects. And, um, and to clarify, not all insects are my friends. Mosquitoes are not my friends. But most insects are my friends. And... Um, in fact, I think people need to be more pro-insect, like ladybugs are hyper cool. This is a ladybug stick-on thing, not a real one. But ladybugs are really cool. And also, a lot of bugs are. You know, bugs are underrated. Bees are dope as hell. There's a weird bug right here. Uh, a lot of people are terrified of bugs, but and the ones that bite, I don't like. But the ones that don't bite, I'm cool with. Now, spiders are different than insects, though. Spiders have eight legs. Spiders in general, I can like. Some spiders are cool. They're, they're a cool concept. They make really good webs. Very unique way of trapping prey. Pretty elegant, beautiful system they got there. But spiders, I don't know. Too many of them bite. I don't trust them. They're cool. If someone has a pet spider, I'll let it go on me and stuff. But I don't know. If I encounter a random spider, I'm assuming it's a bitey one until I hear otherwise. Um, and that's not a diss to the spiders. I think spiders might be underrated as well, like insects. So still pro spider in combo class, but yeah, I don't know. Some of the spiders that bite a little on the fence of whether I'm pro that or not. Now here's an even more debatable die. Is this a die? It's now the same cubic weirdo thing from before where we got a snail, a Y, a U, and I don't know what got burnt off, but it's not even cubic anymore. Does that count? This one probably counts where we got an I, a V, a six or a nine, doesn't clarify whether it's a six or a nine. Um, a fish, and a bird. What is with these teaching dice? I don't know what these blocks are. It's a dice. So, more dice. Here's what we got so far. So, I'm hoping to fill the carrot and maybe the corn. So that when I... Okay, this desk is not good to sit on. Couple more dice in this crevice, and then we're gonna move to another corner of the combo classroom. So, somebody vote for, I'm gonna name a corner based on an item in the corner, and people can vote for where they wanna see more of in the combo class, because there's probably dice for me to find there. So, do you guys wanna see that corner where the whiteboard is? Do you wanna see a place where there's a bunch of clocks on a chair? Do you wanna see a thing called the staghorn fern? or do you want to see under the desk? Someone take a vote. So let's see any more comments in any case. Someone said not a die. So now we have one vote for and for against that it's a die. So we'll see if they get included or not. This one, the burnt one, we're not gonna include. That one's not cubic enough. Uh, we'll see whether the other ones get included. Uh, if I get enough dice, they may not need to be part of the uh, experiment. So under the desk, I hear as our first vote, people can always leave their vote for the next place they want to see. But I guess we're going under the desk now. So, okay. This is chaos land. Sorry, guys. Okay. <laughs> I hope viewers uh, are down with the chaotic stream every once in a while. Some streams, I will have a very particular story or math lesson to tell you uh, or some philosophical message I want to send you. Other streams like today, I'm just on a silly mission, like collecting as many dice without cutting myself on these glass shards. Um, where should I? Okay, I'm going to put these over here on the fence next to where some nails are. There you go. And here, before we look under the desk, 
let me share what happened in the clock quest intro. I like uh, clocks and I'm making a little mini series on my channel where every couple episodes will be clock related, partially to share how my clock quest is going of collecting hundreds of them to fulfill a promise and partially to teach things like modular arithmetic. And when I filmed the intro for the last clock quest, uh, this is what we got. This is the clock now. Some dice fused on there. That's how I got this melted clock on me. And how I got a dice fused on my coat. Yeah. So, I should hang this guy back up. Fix it up a little bit. This has done good things for the combo realm. This clock being burnt is going to teach a lot of people math. People think I'm crazy for doing all this insane stuff in the middle of my math videos, but it makes them to get random people to learn math. I'm tricking everyone into being excited about numbers. So, and I also just like playing with burning clocks. Not a recommendation for anyone to copy. Do not copy. Um, here we got these nice clocks. I should start putting ones in the background so they'll look good in the episode. Got a clock there. This guy we can put up here. This one falls all the time, but it's light enough. It doesn't cause much damage. This big boy. Oh, man. Now that it doesn't have its glass cover, this thing is getting warped. This thing may not survive the rain now that its glass broke. But we can still use it for now. Move its hands and stuff. Do, 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 do. We'll put this fella back here. And now let me aim you. Whoop. Okay, it's not going there. Now let me aim you under the desk. So this desk, what a desk. There's a lot of memories I have with this desk. I have footage of this desk from back in the day when it was in my room. It was in a little green room that I have in the house where I sleep and edit and such. And... I have some good and bad memories with this desk. Not sure if I can share all the bad memories yet. But then one day I decided it's time to switch. It actually kind of came at the time where, unfortunately, my grandma passed away about a year or a little over a year ago. And um, so I ended up getting a desk she used to have after that that was in the house before the house went to someone else. Um, so... Uh, I inherited that desk, put it in my room, and it, it was mostly just for space. This desk was too big to fit in the room. And so then I moved this desk, and it was going to get kicked out onto the street. And it went out onto the street for one minute, and then I was like, no, 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 no. I'm going to put this desk in my combo classroom. It's going to rain on it. Weird stuff's going to happen to it. I don't know how long it's going to survive, but why not? I'll put the desk in my combo classroom. And so set up the desk. Uh in the combo class, got my whiteboards, whoa, started getting my clocks, and it only lasted in the combo class. Well, I guess I put it out here at the very end of last year, right when I was about to start filming combo class stuff, even though I only started dropping it like six months ago. And so right then to last year, it was here, so it's survived a little under a year so far, but really I only started doing crazy stuff on it like six months ago, so... In that six months, it went from a pretty good state to this. So that's the top of the desk, which, as you can see, we got brick dents, we got paint, and we got some beautiful leaves. Thank you, nature. And now we'll go under the desk. We are going to the ground level. What's going on here? I'm going to come from the other side. So down here, under the desk, what's up, y'all? What if I do my whole streams like this from now on? Think this will be the catchiest intro for my streams? Maybe I can, like, get a tube from my mouth closer there so when I yell, you can hear me better. Okay, let's clean up back here. We got this. Oh, I keep forgetting. I'm supposed to be on my dice hunt. There's a lot of dice here. And we just got classroom supplies. Got a paintbrush, some more clocks, got a Rubik's cube. So down here, 
Uh, I'm not going to put my head under there because I do not trust this desk to not fall. Got another whiteboard. And we got these little cat statues. Ba, 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 ba. These remind me of my cat Sage and uh, my new cat Sassafras. There's not one of my cat Dandelion who's a fluff monster because he would be hard to make a picture of with all his fluff. I've always pictured how a intermediate sculpting goal would be to try and sculpt my perfect cat Sage. <clears throat> and the most advanced sculpting goal that only the masters could do would be to sculpt my perfect cat Dandelion with his fluff. Oh man, that would be quite a task. So collecting clocks, we have my painting supplies here. So I, good thing I'm down here. I didn't know there was still a, a paintbrush down there. Got a clock. Ooh, this chair is getting quite a collection of clocks. We got what was part of a guitar once. You guys need to see some old footage sometime where I have a guitar on fire and I smash a guitar and all that. I used to have access to these broken, but mostly functional, but not worth fixing guitars when I worked in a music shop. And so my boss and the repair tech would both know I liked filming crazy stuff with them. And so uh, they were basically whenever a guitar was like less than a hundred dollar guitar with some error that would cost a hundred bucks to fix. They're like, this isn't worth selling to anyone. It sucks. It's broken. Take it. And I would destroy them and smash them in insane, absurdist ways. And that's footage, some of which is on YouTube. If you found the right channel that you guys should have enough clues to secretly find, but I'll make better cuts of the footage in the future anyways, as well as stuff that never got on YouTube yet. There's some wild guitar footage. Um, now under here, as you can see, we got a bunch of leaves with a bunch of random dice and stuff mixed in. Got some bugs and beetles and spiders. I would not be shocked if I get an itchy bite through this process, but eh, you get what you get. So where's my dice collection thing? Um, I need my container. We have salvaged a ton of clocks back here though. Ooh, yeah, and guess what else we salvaged? One of the other platonic solid big boys. One of that. Okay, I missed it. All right, we're coming back around. Okay. Thank you for joining me under the desk, Combo Lords. Any other requests of where you want to see the, uh, what other corners of the classroom you want to see? Um, yeah, someone's saying you can like spiders and not touch them. That's how I feel is like, I have nothing against spiders. They're really cool. But when I see one, I'm going to be hesitant about being friendly with it. Um, not friendly in terms of respect, but in terms of like touching it or stuff like that. Other bugs all let go on me. People tweak out when a little wasp or something or bee goes on them. It's not going to sting you. Come on, chill out. If there's a massive hornet, then I might bug out. But like, Bees are cool. Combo class is super pro B. Combo class is neutral on wasps because they do actually have some benefits and they're also kind of annoying. And I've been chased by a wasp swarm once, like I said in an earlier stream. But in any case, bees are awesome. Now, we've gotten only like a third of this collected and I've already done 40 minutes of this. Um, so... Let's um, collect some more in another corner. A comment is joking about arson. I need to clarify that if I burn anything, it is done incredibly safely and not at all for the purpose of copying in any way, shape, or form. I do my things surprisingly professionally and safe, and it's only for the purpose of teaching math. So not recommending anybody play with fire. It's very dangerous. Do not play with fire even if you see what looks like me playing with fire for the sake of teaching math. So I got some more glass. Now we are going to go, how about this corner? Hmm. What's going on here? Well, apart from this bag that I don't need right there, we've gotten a classroom chicken. You always need a classroom chicken to respect. This is the base of the blender, I guess. Plastic fruit, 
These are some more uh, vegetable containers. Oh, I think this top was supposed to go with the carrots. And this bottom is, I don't know, is something. Vegetables are good. Eat your vegetables. You know, for people who think a particular vegetable is bad, maybe you've just had it cooked bad. Have you tried eating that vegetable with a little olive oil and salt and pepper cooked in the oven for a while? Maybe your mind will change. Here we got some one glasses. I call them one glasses because there's one. One glasses are trippy because these ones are just partially tinted. This one's not going to work. But if you have ones where one lens is on and the other's not, and you wear it for long enough, I swear, your eyes adjust and you can't tell hardly which one is the thing or not. Like if you just keep them on for like an hour and you somehow trick your mind to forget if it was left or right that was the lens, you can be in a state of like, I don't even know which one is the lens because your eyes like literally correct it. So they're both halfway. So weird. So you got to try that with some inexpensive sunglasses that are darker than this. Break out one of them and wear them. Um, so there's some one glasses. Um, here's some plastic bugs. These were from my Threevens episode to demonstrate if you ever have a patch of bugs, Threeven even amount of legs. Most common type of animal leg on the planet, in fact. We base so much stuff on our 10 fingers, ignoring the fact that they have three joints per finger also. And with this 10 finger thing, not only are we ignoring that our fingers could be called 12 with these joints right here, but we're also ignoring the most common insect leg on the planet. They come in sixes. I mean, not even most common insect leg. I mean, that insect legs are the most common animal leg on the planet. Depending how you define leg, the most common leg on the planet. Depending how you define leg. So, where's all my dice? Okay. I'm making this job easier for my cameraman friend later. Because before we film, me and him are going to go on an extra thorough dice collecting mission. And I'm trying to save us some time. <laughs> so, let me take a look if we got any more chats in here. Uh, we got a lot of people hate vegetables because school prepared food. I agree. That's probably one of the big reasons. And like I said, um, oven cooked vegetables are often better than boiled or steamed for mo most vegetables, not all. And so people eat like a steamed flavorless one that's all like limp and like soft. And most vegetables, if you instead cook them on a low heat on something like the oven, they become so good. Um, so vegetables are great. Like some of the greatest vegetables include asparagus, artichoke, broccoli, cauliflower. Oh, there's so many good ones. Carrots are cool too. Like greens that you put in salads can be refreshing. Even lettuce. Sometimes I bring a bag of lettuce on a long hike and people are like, you're insane. Why do you think you're going to want a bag of lettuce? Then when they're all worn out after the hike, they're like, can I have some lettuce? And I'm like, yeah, when you admit that you were scorning the lettuce and now you've embraced it. No, I'm kidding. I share the lettuce no matter what. Um, <laughs> here we got an interesting guy. This one seems to have been through one of the clock mishaps. It's pretty melted. Uh, so that's a cool one. That one's been through some stuff. That dice is a veteran. All right. So I kind of hate that the singular of dice is die because it's so confusing. Like I've written sentences in books that I want to make it clear I'm talking about one die. And you have to like add an extra word in the sentence to clarify that you don't mean the word die, like dying. Like I'm like almost worried that YouTube, like if I put die singular in a title, I feel like YouTube doesn't advertise videos that say die in them as much. And I'm like, I'm talking about one dice. Um, all right. Uh, let me real quick text my cameraman who just texted me. Um, to let him know that's a good time. He's going to be here in like 45 minutes. So my stream will be done before then at the latest. Cool. All right. So any other thoughts in the chat before I go dice hunting more? Um, 
Someone added lentils and beans. Yep, classics. There's so many good types of bean out there. Got your kidneys, your garbanzos, your black beans, so many good types of beans. Um, I think they count as vegetables, but here's the thing. You got to wait until my episode about the fruit and vegetable conspiracy or maybe called the tomato conspiracy because vegetable is not a botanical term. So the fruit and vegetable conspiracy goes even deeper when you realize that botanically fruits have a different classification than what we normally consider. And botanically vegetables don't exist. They're not a term. So we're going to go into that in a, a fun like lunch break episode. That'll be one of the next lunch breaks. Um, someone's saying cooking is not a common skill. Now, I think people should try and cook more and find it meditative. I cook a lot. I think it's a meditative activity. You can like listen to a podcast or watch your combo class, put on a stream in the background while you're cooking and make something good. Have fun combining ingredients, you know? We're, if you don't know what to do, look up three recipes for what you want to make online and average them. And you'll you'll have a good thing, I swear. That's a, my method. If I want to make something and I don't know at all how to do it, average three or four recipes online. Now, um, I mean, assuming they're similar, you can't be like, okay, one way said that we're broiling it and one way said we're sauteing it. So I'm going to find the, the intermediate value between the two times. You get like two or three similar ways of cooking something, average what they say for how long and how hot and stuff. Um, except sometimes you got to know one thing that cooking recipes always lie about. Cooking recipes always insist that you can caramelize onions or caramelize or whatever in like two minutes or like five minutes. First of all, to caramelize or caramelize or whatever an onion, that's a specific process that usually takes like half an hour or something. Then even if they're using that term loosely to mean you want the onions tasting really good and just being like soft and cooked through and starting to turn brown, like onions can get really good. That still does not take five minutes. They lie. Every other step sometimes is like, okay, it'll take two minutes to cook the meat. Now just five minutes before that, caramelize your onions. Like, no. So that's one thing to look out for. The one way that I don't know why all of the cooking recipe texts decided to have a common lie among them. <laughs> so um, someone's also saying in German, D or I, th I don't know how it's pronounced. Maybe D or die is the female V. So yeah, maybe I'm doing that. I am partially German. My grandfather was actually a Jew in Germany in the Holocaust. I never met him. He died before I was born but my dad's dad escaped the Holocaust as a Jew from Germany. And so I am one quarter German, I guess. Um, well, I guess not. If you look back far enough, he was partially German, partially French and other stuff. So I'm not like straight up one quarter German in the blood, but one of my four grandparents was born in Germany, um, who I never met. Unfortunately, I never met my grandparents on my dad's side. Unfortunately, they died when he was pretty young. Uh, so that's too bad. Also, the grandparents on my mom's side are gone, but I did get to meet them. So, hope all of them are resting gently. Now, uh, beans are legumes, someone says. So, yeah, maybe I, that'll come up in the fruit vegetable conspiracy episode. I got to research how beans fit in a little more. I have some notes about that back in the day, and beans were stumping me. So, I got to get through that. Now... Let's see. Are someone's asking our science videos going to mostly be lunch breaks, or is it a coincidence that they're about food? Um, I think that's more coincidental because um, science I really like, but I want to save certain science topics until I have a really cool visual demonstration of them. So, like science related to like cool science experiments with water and magnets and things like that. I'm kind of waiting until I can collaborate with people who have skills or tools that I don't have in those fields. And so my sciencey videos end up being whatever I can do around here. Like maybe there'll be one about bubbles before long, but so far the sciencey ones kind of landed on, I wouldn't even call the first break that 
first lunch break that sciency it's almost just like a vlog like video of me enjoying my yard and introducing viewers to my front yard and sharing a few surprisingly edible foods that i ate and um the second lunch break or snack break is uh was more sciency about apples that's kind of a coincidence because i had so many apples around i was like how can i make a fun video with them well science is my friend uh so kind of a coincidence kind of because i like cooking probably there will continue to be lunch breaks here and there that involve science as well as the more casual side of some episodes where i maybe share a little more of my life or place um and then there will be hopefully other science too. I originally started combo class to be a mix of math and science and language. And I got very carried away with the math part and realized that's the one that I can do fully in my little classroom here in the way I wanna make full episodes. And the science ones, I don't quite have the tools yet. I'm making everything here I can myself with like barely any budget out of my savings, working literally out of the dirt in the corner of my yard, editing any episodes myself that I can't find someone else to. And so I'm just doing what I can in grade negative one. Hopefully as I get more resources and collaborators in future grades, I will be able to do crazy science stuff as well. So let's see any more here. Um, Someone's saying there's kind of no such thing as a German. It's mostly a mix of all sorts of European things. And yeah, like the blood from that side of my grandfather who grew up in Germany was a mix of a lot of stuff, French, German, Polish, different stuff like that. Um, also, there's a little bit of Russian in me, which you, uh, nah, never mind. I'll go into that later. But I have a little bit of all kinds of stuff in me, um, mostly German, French, Russian, uh, Polish. Ukrainian. It's uh, some of those roots are weird because like my uh, roots were in what was called <laughs> Ukraine and now is called Russia in some of those regions. So it's like I'm kind of from what's now called Russia, if you zoom back, but it was actually Ukrainian people. Um, so, um, yeah, more comments just saying some nice stuff. Oh, yeah, the cops. Someone uh, was joking because there's a siren out there. Yeah, I live in a neighborhood that some stuff goes down. My neighborhood is, it's getting kind of annoyingly gentrified, actually. They're like building kind of nice stuff and it's getting harder to park and rich people are moving in and stuff. And it's kind of annoying. I kind of liked it more when it was just like sirens and crazy stuff. When I moved here, there used to be a gang, basically, like a group of 20-ish people who were probably affiliated with some gang or another who would hang out most nights on a corner, like half a block from my house before the cops started stopping by like five times a day to make that not happen. But they never messed with me. I've had crazy stuff in my neighborhood. And one time in my life, I was mugged. And apart from one time in my life that I'll tell you a story about another time, no one's messed with me, even though it's a bad neighborhood because I've just stayed out of trouble, kind of. I've actually had some crazy trouble, but uh, I'll, I'll see when I tell you guys about the crazy trouble. Mostly, I feel like even in uh, this neighborhood, it's enough that I can like walk around at night and know there's a 0.0001% chance I get mugged. And uh, there are sirens and stuff once in a while. Luckily, they've rarely been for me. So, um, and someone saying it's still Ukraine. Do not believe the mad czar. Yeah, uh, very not pro-Putin, very pro-Ukraine. So I'm just talking about what a map might call it these days. But I definitely, in whatever conflicts are going on right now, support Ukraine and not that fucking madman Putin. Um, so let's get some more dice. Um I do have to shut off the stream pretty soon. My camera guy's coming in half an hour, but let's collect a few more dice before that. Like I said, today was a more chaotic stream, less of a particular story or equation that I had to teach you guys. More of a, why not invite you guys in my weird corner for an hour while I collect some stuff? Uh, in any case, I probably will get on a full streaming schedule before long. I really enjoy doing it. So I can imagine probably picking two or three days a week that I consistently stream. I also like making my short videos every day possible. And like I mentioned uh, in past streams, 
I have been reposting some videos I've made since April on this combo class bonus channel. And so I'm mostly out of old ones. And so it might start being more like a short video every other day once in a while. But I'm going to try and do it any day I can because I find it motivational anyway to make a new short one I order and or to stream for an hour or two. Um, but really the priority is to make sure I can get out a main channel episode at least once a week, which my main goal is once every six days. That's what I'm trying to get toward. Once every six days would be fun because base six is the best base. Once every six days would change the weekday it drops on per week, one at a time. It would be fun because you get more. You'd get more than one a week. And it wouldn't be so rushed that I would be like, got to make a new episode, God. It would be like the amount of time where I still like fully enjoy making a full episode and have enough time to get it right. So that might not come right away, but for now I'm dropping an episode there every six days and I'll see if I can fully keep that up or if it's going to be more rough during grade negative one. Like I said, I haven't made a cent off this channel yet. I haven't, uh, I just applied for monetization on there to be in the partner program because they were already showing ads on the videos anyway. So I'm like, okay, I'll apply to be a YouTube partner so I get a little money if they show ads, but that's not going to be much money. They don't give you money for the shorts doing really well. It's only for the main channel videos right now. And so I'm going to get like not many bucks from that. If you look at something like Social Blade, that's a site that predicts like earnings for people. Never trust that for another influencer. Cause I know when I looked at my page, they're like, he's making 200 bucks a day from his shorts. And I'm like, no, YouTube does not pay like that. I, I'm not even in the partner program so, for the shorts channel. So I, like only on the main channel. So it's like, I don't know where Social Blade decided some algorithm for how many views I got that they're like, he's making like 200 bucks a day. I'm like, no, I haven't made a cent off this. So um, I'm making combo class from the dirt and we're just doing what we can do this grade. It'll be more professional and more in line in grade negative two, but I will always look back fondly on the chaos that grade negative one had and how I somehow have made this work despite my two surgeries, despite many crazy things in my life. Um, combo class is one thing that I feel secure about because I know I'm helping people learn and have fun while learning. So also remember, guys, what I'm going to uh, post. Let me post a link to this right here. Um, people were recommending they want to chat on Discord. So I made a combo class Discord, even though I haven't used that much. I'm going to put that here for any combo heads. There's also, I'll put right here, a combo class subreddit. So if you go to the subreddit of Combo Class, you can post any random weird memes or thoughts or questions. And I'll probably look at that once in a while because I like Reddit. Probably end up going getting into the Discord too if there's good Combo Lords to chat with there. And let me send you a link to what that is. The link right here. Do, do, do. And... I'm making this a not expiring link because this is just a discord for any combo heads who want to stumble in there and chat about combo stuff. Now I am assembling a combo team of collaborators as well. So remember if anyone wants to really help try and help, you know, spread the combo dream by editing or promoting or helping me in different ways, email me at combo university, one word combo university at gmail.com or if you don't have time to do much help and you just want to chat then go to that subreddit or discord now i am going to log off pretty soon because i'm realizing that loving chatting with you guys is distracting me from my mission of cleaning up all these dice i also just got to get ready in a few other ways to make sure i'm ready to fully teach this lesson which as a reminder we're going to have a three evens episode we're going to have a modular clock magic episode. And then we're going to have the one I'm filming this afternoon that relates to this strange sequence and somehow relates to the dice I'm collecting as well. So stay tuned to all of that. And for further mishaps with the dice, because the dice are going to show up in many episodes. In addition to their shapes, they have fun probability things. So this episode doesn't even talk about the numbers on the dice. That's a whole nother story. 
Now, I love all you combo lords. Before I log off, I want to remind everyone that not only is learning fun and magical, but if you're going through hard stuff in your life, try and look for those moments of beauty and laughter. Look for the magic within nature, within laughter, within music, within numbers, within reading and writing, within animals and plants, maybe within cooking, like we said, within any hobby that feels good to you, that you feel like you're doing a good thing, or even relaxing activities. Look for those moments of magic. I've had the hardest year you could imagine. I've barely gone into it, but I had two surgeries. I used to be addicted to alcohol and haven't drank a drop of alcohol this year. I had family members die last year. I had my room flood at the end of last year and ruin a lot of my stuff. I've had a really, really hard year and a half. I almost died in January of 2021. So if you go back two years, I've had an unbelievably hard two years. But I still find moments of magic and I work my ass off to make cool stuff. So I hope all of you out there are finding whatever it is that you want to apply all your time and energy towards. And in between that, enjoying some beautiful moments of laughter, learning, nature, and things like that. And I'm also going to thank, in addition to all the combo lords out there, I like doing my little, maybe silly, maybe important Thank you to whatever aliens could be watching now or later. And thank you if there's some simulation program or not aliens. And thank you if there's some God or gods out there. And thank you to whatever nature patterns I know exist in nature and numbers. So good to thank whatever's out there. I'm a bit agnostic about all that, but it's good to think and thank. I love all of you. And so let's see if there's any last comments. Someone says, mysterious purposes, the FBI has entered. Someone asked who I am. Uh, that will take a while to explain, but you can call me Demotro or Professor Demotro or the original Combo Lord or whatever you want. Now, I will catch you guys later. I'm going to log out, shoot some messages on that subreddit or Discord or my email if you really want to help out. I love all you guys. Get ready for some more learning because I'll probably have a short video later today. I will definitely have a full episode this Saturday or Sunday and then episodes every six or seven days from there. Maybe short ones every day. And keep an eye out for the streams because I've just been doing them at random times. But usually every couple of days I schedule a stream at like three hours before I do it. <laughs> so love you guys. I'm going to head out. Bye.